Hi, this is Lauren Hill from DMG School Project. Hi, welcome. We come to you from the Dr. McClellan Gallery in St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm here with Will Ortman as he just finished the 2020 Jean and Julia Servo Residency Program. We've been honored to host him for the past six weeks, creating a new body of work here in DMG School Project's Hot Glass Studio. Um, at the end of that, they get to install a work here in the gallery, or works here in the gallery. Um, so right now, we, we have a selection of pieces, handpicked by Duncan himself. Um, we actually sold a piece as soon as we put it out earlier. Congratulations on that, Will. Thank you. That's good, yeah. Yeah, I bet. Um, and so I just got a couple questions for him. Um, we're going to go ahead and start. Um, can you give me a brief history or a brief background on your career? Maybe what inspires you, where you've studied, who you've studied with? Yeah, so I went to the Columbus College of Art and Design in Columbus, Ohio, where I originally went for media studies. Uh, so I was going to be a computer animator, but I found out once I got there that they had a glass program, and that's where I first fell in love with glass and I've been making it ever since. Um, I was fortunate enough during my time there to work for a production studio during the time, um, which really allowed me to build my skill up because I was doing it eight hours a day constantly. So I'd taken one semester and then worked at a studio and then went back and I was better than all the advanced students. So I was very fortunate that I was able to get that experience and that really helped me elevate or excel my glass skill. Um, since then I've worked for another production studio since and then on the side just created my artwork. So how long have you been working in glass? I've been working with glass for 15 years uh, on my own for about the past five years. And Duncan found you, the first time we heard of you was at the, what was it, Gasparilla, right? So he said, go find this kid in this booth and invite him here, which is really how you started that connection with us. But doing the outdoor markets is where he started as well. Right. Um, and he did those for about 30 years. So there's a lot of respect for that kind of life. It's hard, right? Yeah. So like, tell us about a day of work doing the outdoor you start by what, setting up your booth, unpacking everything? Like Yeah, so when you're first starting off and you're not quite as recognized as you'd like to be, um, you kind of do that to start off, to get your name out there and that's what people notice. Um, so yeah, you make the work and then you uh, get a van and pack it all up and then travel, however far you need to travel to the city. So and how many states you travel, like how many shows were you doing a year until like COVID? Uh, I was doing about 20 shows a year, uh, which isn't too bad. But it's a lot, it's it like is like full time. It is a lot, yeah, because depending on how far you have to travel. So what's the farthest you've traveled from home? Key West. Oh yeah? What's home for you? Columbus, Ohio. Okay. So uh, what has inspired this body of work with the Marini? Like where did you start? And is that a tattoo of the Marini on you? Yeah, uh, that it is. That's artwork tattooed on you, huh? Yes, uh, Okay, and it's Marini. Finished, uh, it kind of looks like this one. Yeah. So what has inspired this body of work? Uh, so nature inspired it. Uh, when I first learned about Marini use and glass, that's what attracted me most. Because I really love color and design. Because one of the first things you learn school is color concept and design theory. So that really helped me uh, once I got to glass. Uh, it's a little trickier because you have to kind of understand how glass works to understand how the color interacts with each other. But that was a big, uh, definitely a big help and once I got into actually trying to design the glass. Uh, so the things that inspired me about it like what kind of nature? Uh, well, I really love the ocean and the beach. So a lot of these pieces uh, can kind of resemble jellyfish. Mm. Yeah, okay. uh, pieces like in, the, in these moon series, um, it 
resembles a celestial moon and then the stars. So when you look at the sun and how the sunbursts come off of it, that's what these kind of lines represent is how the sunburst naturally occurs. And then uh, same with these, these are kind of like uh, sea anemones almost. Certain patterns with these trails, the aurora borealis, really fascinates me. So I was trying to figure out how I could get those transparencies uh, in those certain colors of the uh, borealis. Sorry. No, you're okay. Um, so what have you learned? Can you tell us something that you've learned about material or galleries or all the above? Uh, I've learned what colors not to use. That's important in reading work. Yes, uh, that is one of the sad things about glasses compatibility. Uh, so in my ventures of using colors that I like, I've definitely found colors not to use. Such as, what colors can't you use? Uh, yellow, opaque yellows and reds. Do not like to play nice with the, the way that I make things. Because I layer a bunch of different colors together, uh, so they don't like to be brought up to temperature too many times. Some colors we've learned only like one time. You have one time go on, yeah. and because yeah. all these colors have different metals, right? And that's where the compatibility issue comes in. So if you have red, which is gold, and you have yellow, which is I think it's some sulfur, yeah. and maybe those two metals don't like each other when you put them on top, that might be where you're getting. In compatibility of glass world, we're talk, talking about cracks, right. right? So you make it, you get it all done, you've spent 40 hours making the marini, cold work of the marini, putting it together, getting it out of the kiln, and it sits fine for a day. And you're like, yay, it's arrived! And then you come in the next day and you've got a crack through those color points. Right. Which is... Heartbreaking. It yeah, is. You, uh, there's many pieces that I fell in love with, and uh, yeah, a day or two later, and I sandblast a lot of stuff, so even just the uh, the shock of sandblasting can cause the stress in the glass to come out. Yeah. So I've had pieces where I've let sit for two weeks and it was completely fine, and then the second you go to blast it, it's that vibration, right? Or maybe. Uh, yeah, it stresses it out. So I've told a lot of artists through this program, and I also use it for myself, but. If I really love a piece, I know it's going to break. Or something's going to happen, right? So if I really love a piece, I just like, oh, I closed the kiln. I'm like, I really hate that one. Just convince yourself that you don't <laughs> no, like it. It's that way yeah. it uh, yeah. energy doesn't disturb it. So we've learned about compatibility issues, what colors not to use. We've done that with a couple other artists, too. And I think the school project should make a chart of yeah. not to use color marini. I can add right? quite a few colors yeah. to those. <laughs> Yeah, you can help be an author. Um, so what else? Have you learned other things? Is there other, other things that have popped through your brain? Yeah, I've learned uh, patience. Uh, glass definitely requires that, mm -hmm. just by the nature of it. Because I'm always a student of it, I'm constantly learning. So uh, just to kind of sit back and breathe when something doesn't quite go exactly how you plan. You mean everything doesn't go how you plan? No. <laughs> Not as much as a. Uh, no. Okay. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you.